G'day people, Sharon here. Today I'm going to show you four step buttonholes and blind hems on Janome's FD206. When we are sewing a buttonhole, the left side of the buttonhole comes forward. On there it will do a narrow zigzag down that side. We then need to do the front bar tack move there it will do the wide zigzag there move on to three it will do the narrow zigzag going backwards and then on to four to do the wide zigzag at the end to do a buttonhole put the foot on, clip it on from the back, put some fabric underneath and do the needle all the way down and all the way up until the take up lever is right at the top again, lift the foot and pull it out and that gets your thread underneath the buttonhole foot, it does nothing else, just gets it under there. A buttonhole and I have drawn on here where I want it to be. I am now setting my machine onto the one setting for the buttonhole and I'm going to have my left needle come down at that top edge and I need to move the buttonhole foot forward until it encompasses all of the drawn buttonhole. So I'm on one and now I start stitching and the machine will do a narrow zigzag that will be on the left of the uh, drawn buttonhole. So here we go. And I have moved my take up lever till the machine is right at the top and that means it's finished its stitch and then I shift my stitch selector onto the two and four and I'm going to let it do about eight stitches here so that's one two three four five six seven make sure it's all the way up then I'm moving my stitch selector over to number three and it will now do the reversing I have to notice to go to the outside and up so that's up to me to notice when it's done enough stitches down there to match with this go back to the four and two and it's going to do the Bar tack, here we go. And there we are. And make sure that the take up lever is always completely at the top. When you make sure that that's at the top, the stitch thing is finished underneath. I can pull this out to the back and cut the thread off. To take my thread through to the back to tie it off, if I go underneath, I can pull on the, need uh, the bobbin thread and pull my needle thread through. I'm going to need a pin to get hold of it. So I'm pulling that red thread through to the back and then tie the red and the blue threads off. And that's purely and simply some little granny knots here. Yeah, no big deal. and then cut them off. Now you sh probably should also be cutting off the, um, tying off the um, original thread as well. One of the problems with these machines being a WYSIWYG is that you have no control over how 
loose that side of it is compared to that side. So this machine, its buttonholes are not going to be terribly even and you really need to get into the electronic machines before you start seeing nice buttonholes. Big thanks to Wendy from genomisewing.com.au for loaning me the machine I've used today. The hardest thing about blind hems is the folding. Watch that bit carefully. So now we are going to do a blind hem. And I've not yet got the blind hem foot on, but I'm going to show you my preparation. I've deliberately chosen a fabric that has a very definite wrong side and right side. I have folded up an edge and folded it up again. That is going to be my hem. When I start doing blind hems on sewing machines, I always do an extra row of stitching that makes my life so much easier. So I am moving my stitch selector to stitch C, which is the large straight stitch. Now I want to have preferably this extra bit that I folded over, I want that to be stitched down, but I really do want to have a reasonable amount of fabric here on the edge. So I'm doing straight stitch and I'm trying to keep sort of along here. You'll notice I'm sewing with the large amount of my fabric on the left. Sewing machines are intended for you to have the seam on the right hand side, not the left. This little space is not big enough to have whole things in if you can avoid it. So try to always sew with the bulk of your fabric on the left. It doesn't matter if I'm not perfectly exact with this because it's going to be pulled out later. It is there to hold things in place while I'm doing the blind hem. We're now going to put the blind hem foot on. So pull the thing towards me and put the blind hem foot in position. There we go. And I need to go to stitch G. So I need to make sure which stitch it's going to put down. It's putting down the little zigzags, see it's like this here. It's putting down the little zigzags on the right and now it's going over all the way to the left. That is the stitch that I need to be able to work out. And when it's going all the way over there, I need to adjust this foot so that it's very slightly to the right of where that needle is going. Now, take that out. Oops. Because I've done what I needed to do with that. When you are sewing blind hem, you have the right side of the fabric down. But we're not doing this. What we're doing is folding that over so that we can see the inside edge of that hem. Try and make it um, an even amount. So what we're doing putting the in there we want this the needle to just be catching the edge of this fold and the lesser the amount it catches it by the better the blind hem will look from the right hand side the right hand side the right side of the fabric so what I'm doing, folding the fabric here, and now all I have to do is keep this folded edge right next to that flange. So it's stitching on the back of the hem, and then it comes over and does one stitch into the this, which is the top fabric. Hold 
do a reasonable amount of it so that you can see just what we're what we're aiming at. The bigger the bite it takes out of this folded edge, the more it will be visible on the right side of the fabric. If you're doing it with a thick fabric, then you've got more leeway to play with before it really starts showing up on the right side of the, the fabric. So this is the wrong side of the, the garment. So if it was a pair of pants, this would be the wrong side. The right side would be underneath and I'm exposing the inside edge of the hem. Now you can see here the stitching is mostly on this bit which is the inside of the hem and there's just a little tiny bit being picked up here. I actually managed towards the end to miss picking it up in a few places here so that it won't be held there. But now if we turn this the right way over, remember that original line of stitching was me putting something down so that I could not have to worry about where things were going to move while I was doing the blind hem bit. And if we look here, there's a little red piece that is the blind hem those little red bits now if they were in purple fabric thread which matched the fabric it would be pretty hard to see them the final thing i need to do is to unpick this which is why i did it with stitch c because stitch c is a really big one so by doing it this way, this is really easy to pull out. And that's what I'll do now. Now I've just been along and I have used my quick unpick or stitch ripper and picked out about every third stitch in that row. When I go to the back, if I grab hold of the red thread now, I'll get hold of it in a moment. And as I pull that, that should just pull everything undone. There'll be some random threads. So now when we go to the right side, I've managed to completely unthread the machine. They're not easy to see, are they? Even though that is red thread, and if I on the back you can see where the stitches are coming through now the final thing you need to do is to press it and by pressing it those stitches will meld into the fabric and they'll be even less visible so if they were done with a purple thread that somewhat matched this fabric what you would be seeing on the back is that, but that little red thread is just that little tiny bit in there. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hope you got something out of it.